This is lab 5 of ECE 480. In this lab, we'll finish the digital color organ project by adding the digital filters. So before we start, there's four different types of filters we're going to go over. First, we have low pass, then high pass, uh, band pass, and also band stop. These are the generic four filter responses that you're going to see in either analog or digital filters. So it helps to have an overview of what we're going to be looking at in this lab. So in this lab, we're only going to program and test low pass, high pass, and band pass. Although the MSP430 does have the capability to do band stop as well. Designing a digital filter is going to require a little bit of knowledge about the, the filter parameters that you want to achieve in your final filter design. These are uh, referred to as the pass band and the stop band. And then in between that, you have what's called the cutoff frequency. That's the transition between the pass band and the, and the stop band. Two criteria we're going to look at in the design are what are called pass band ripple and then stop band attenuation. In a perfect filter, there's no pass band ripple. And then also in a perfect filter, the stop band attenuation would be infinite. But for our case, we're going to have a non-zero value of the pass band ripple. And the stop band attenuation isn't going to be infinite. It might be negative 20 dB or negative 30 dB. So an overview of what these terms mean. Uh, the pass band is pretty simple. That means signals pass through unaffected, sometimes with a small amount of attenuation or amplification. This is called the pass band ripple. And then in the stop band, signals are attenuated by a certain amount relative to the pass band. So that, again, is called the stop band attenuation. We also saw this in the in the graph above. The frequency in between the bat, the pass band and the stop band is called the cutoff frequency. Now, if you have two filters that have the exact same cutoff frequency, for exact for example, a low pass filter and a high pass filter, uh, this is also called the crossover frequency. This is where the signals cross over from one filter to another filter. So we'll measure that in lab actually for a low pass and a high pass filter. The other example we're going to look at is a bandpass filter. Now in this case, you have two stop bands and only one pass band. And then in between these transition points between a stop band and a pass band is a cutoff frequency. So in this case, we have two, both a, an upper cutoff frequency and a lower cutoff frequency. So to design these in lab, we're actually going to cascade a high pass and a low pass filter. So you design the high pass filter for this cutoff frequency number one here, and then you output that directly to another low pass filter that's designed for cutoff frequency two, and then you get an overall band pass filter response. While you're designing these filters, they're going to ask you whether you want a Butterworth filter design or a Chebyshev filter design. Now these are the same two types of filters you would see in analog filter design, and you can measure the same kind of response characteristics in a digital filter as well. So the basic difference between these, uh, we can consider the pass band ripple and then also the stop band attenuation. So a Butterworth filter is going to have a very flat pass band, which is desirable sometimes. Uh, that means there's very, very little or no ripple at all. The trade-off is that in the stop band, for the same order filter, the cutoff isn't going to be as sharp uh, compared to a Chebyshev. So basically what you're doing here is you're trading off uh, pass band ripple performance for stop band attenuation. So depending on what kind of response you want, one or the other might be better. For us, we're going to want the best response possible with the lowest amount of filter coefficients. So we're going to go Chebyshev for most of the filters in this lab. So the specific type of filter we're going to be designing is called a lattice wave digital filter. Uh, now this is actually a really neat um, design of filter. It's what's called a, an infinite impulse response filter, which is normally unstable. 
but in this case, the design is relatively stable, which makes uh, implementation of this filter relatively easy. I'm going to zoom out here so you can see everything. So what's going on here is we're able to implement analog filters, high pass, low pass, band pass, or band stop, using only addition, subtraction, and multiplication operations. This is a very efficient way to do digital filtering. The input sample here is simply your ADC10 mem register, one simple, one single sample of your analog signal set to a temporary variable. And then that's run through the th these three different adapter blocks here. The number of adap adapter blocks in the filter determines the order of the filter. So in this case, there's three adapter blocks. This is a third order low pass filter. Uh, so this sample will be run through all the different adapter blocks and the design equations for each adapter block are given here. Uh, these are also in the application note that we're going to be using throughout this lab. Each adapter has both an alpha var variable and then a delay variable. For this first adapter, it's alpha zero and then delay zero. The alpha variables determine the, the response of the filter, and then the delay variables are simply simply temporary storage variables that are used as uh, as RAM for the for the filter. So at the output, you'll get these these two output variables: out P1 from adapter zero, and then out P1 from adapter one. And if you sum these together, that'll be a low pass filter output. You can also subtract these two outputs, and then that'll give you a high pass filter output with the same exact design equations. This will be very helpful when you're doing the lab. In part B of the lab, you'll actually run into a phenomenon called aliasing. Now you might remember this from some of your signal processing classes, uh, but if you don't, this is a phenomenon where high frequencies can imitate low frequencies depending on the sampling frequency that you choose. Now the reason this happens is if your input frequency is much greater than your sampling frequency, for example in this signal if we only take three samples, well there is one, two, three, four cycles of the input signal, we can actually trick the analog to digital converter into thinking that this is a much lower frequency sine wave than it actually is. So the way you can get around this is by filtering the input signal to limit the bandwidth and prevent aliasing. So if you remember back to lab two, we added an analog filter between the input to the MSP430 and the output of the line input summer and the microphone amplifier. Now the reason for this filter was to prevent aliasing. And so in that case, we assumed that the sampling frequency was going to be 16 kilohertz. As you design this lab, you might realize that 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 that's not quite going to work anymore, so you might have to redesign that analog filter. Here's our final de design for the digital color organ. On the left here is the analog input, and then on the right are the four LED banks. Only two of them are shown here, but the, the two in between here are, are exactly the same, uh, just with a different filter uh, configuration. The way this works is we, we take an input, we sample it with the ADC-10, and then we send it to all four filters at the same time. And each sample is filtered and then used to control a timer output, which will pulse width modulate the LEDs. So our final design will have four total filters, a low pass filter, then two band pass filters, and one high pass filter. That's a total of four lattice wave digital filters. And then you might be wondering, how can we implement four pulse width modulation outputs with only two timers? Well, if you remember, it's not dependent on the timer, it's dependent on the capture compare register. So there's actually four, actually five capture compare registers that we can use in this variant of the MSP430. This application actually uses almost all of the capabilities and processing power of the MSP430. All right, so the concepts we're going to cover in this lab are mainly programming lattice wave digital filters, but then we're also going to look at ways to optimize these filters and run more efficiently on the limited processing power of the MSP430.
And then finally, you're going to dive into the design of a four channel color organ uh, and make the low pass, the high pass and the band pass filters uh, to a set uh, analog filter specification. And also in part A, you're going to measure the cutoff frequency of a digital filter using the signal generator as a source, and then just sweep through the frequency and watch how the response changes. So the only additional background material you're going to need is the Texas Instruments Application Report number SLAA331. You can find this simply either by going onto the Texas Instruments website or Googling the number SLAA331. So this is Lab 5 of ECE 480. Thanks for watching.